Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. Today is day 24 of the 2023 December Daily Advent Tags calendar event hosted by Tracy Fox Creative. Many, many wonderful videos have come before this and I was thinking as we're nearing the end of this, it might be kind of fun to do something fairly simple and fairly straightforward that can be used for this as well as for other projects. I did two versions of it, one with tags because the kit is lush with fabulous tags, but I also did it as a plain pocket. And the basic premise of this is, well, oh, here we go, it was on this side. It's an idea for a tag or a pocket. In this case, this would be glued onto a page as a pocket with some scratch paper to use for journaling spots. Um, for those of you who've been to my channel before, you know that I'm a major fan of journaling spots that are uh, maybe not necessarily out in the open. And so this one was designed to be glued onto a page as a pocket with the journaling space. On this one, I used some, it's bulkier, I guess is a good way to put it. So there's mounting foam behind there. There's some uh, Nouveau Deluxe Crystal Glaze on here. There's some sheen and some embellishment and some extra bits, so it's a little bit bulkier. But it doesn't have to be. Uh, this is, like I said, a double layer where I laid fussy cuts on top of each other. But we, you can also do it where it's a fairly flat piece. You still have the notepad and this opening it up as a notepad but and having paper on it. But this one doesn't have the dimension that the other has. I don't have any glaze on this one. I don't have any wax or embossing powder or any of those things. So depending on what your preference and style is, you can do this fairly simply or jazz it up a bit, just depending on what you prefer. Also, this one, I sewed the notepad in place, but I know that not everybody likes to sew on their pages. So here I put the paper on with just some mini staples, the Tim Holtz stapler. This one is a double-sided tag so that you could just clip it into a book if you chose to, or you can glue it down and make it a pocket or a side tuck or what have you, but it's just a flip over double-sided tag, whereas this one was clearly designed to be a pocket and put down. But the concept is the same either way, and I'm gonna quickly show you how you can make this. The kit is available through Etsy, and it's the Tracy Fox Creative December Daily 2023. Again, I know most of you probably already have it, but if for some reason you don't, there you go. This is what I used. Another thing I like about this is this will work with any style, any color. The kit is flush with a variety of different elements, and I chose these because I wanted to work in this color palette. But whatever you do, the concept can be carried through with the product that you like. All right, so in this case, this is, like I said, essentially the same thing, but this isn't a tag, it's a pocket. I'm gonna show it to you on a pocket. Here I've got it with dimension and I'll show you how I did that. Here I just did it as flat. So again, depending on your wants and needs, your personal preferences, there are some options open for you. All right, I, uh, this uses fairly simple supplies, pretty much anything you've got in your um, stash you're welcome to use. I didn't put a date on this one. I did put a date on this one. Either way, it works out real well. And I'll, I'll we'll just play with it and I will show you some of the different things you can do. All right, for this one, I started with two pieces of tags. Now, a lot of times when I cut out tags, my personal preference is to not cut off the corners, especially if I'm going to have the tags be flush at the end. I find it easier just to cut off both bits at the same time. If you choose to cut it off in advance, it's not not really a big deal either way. This piece of paper is down here. This time I'm trying something different because of shadows um, with the ring light. So if this doesn't work well or you don't care for it, please let me know and I will, I will alter it the next time. What I used to create this is just, I think this is a one inch strip of cardstock, scrap cardstock. You can use three a quarter inch. I think the first one I used was three quarter inch. This one was a one inch, just just an off cut or a scrap of cardstock, large enough to wrap around the page enough to overlap. And that's the first piece that um, that I like to get into place. Actually, no, it's not. It's the second piece I like to get into place. First thing is whatever you're going to use as a notepad. This is just a vintage leftover spiral bound notepad that I, I had. And so I'll take a few pieces from that. I could sew it on or staple it on either way. 
on this one you can see I cut the top off maybe on this one I kind of like the look that it gives with the, the little bit of a torn edge there so maybe I'll leave that in place and I'll put it in about the center and for the sake of speed and ease I will just staple this on I'll hold it here and this is a Tim Holtz tiny attacher but any stapler will work just fine they don't have to be perfect they don't have to be centered but of course if you like that look you're welcome to do that so I put the staples in place and it's, it's mostly centered it's not perfect but that's okay and then I'm going to depending on what I'm going to use to cover my closure will depend on how wide I want this. If I'm going to use something a little bit narrower, maybe I want um, a smaller piece as the cover closure, then maybe I'd want this a little bit narrower. But on this one, I had prepped this two bird image just because the others were two birds and there's lots of great, um, I guess these are doves, um, great two bird images within this kit. And I really liked the way that looked on here. I liked the size and the style. So that's why I chose it. Um, just a strip and then you can cut it in half now you can see on this one I opened it to the left and I only have the strap going part way across and on this one the strap goes all the way across to the edge and opens this way to write in they both work so whatever you like whatever you have material wise whatever you need this is a great project for scraps for except for the tags the rest of it scraps work really well so I'm going to cut this about in half and I flip this tag over and I'm going to put a little bit of glue on either side. Notice I'm not really measuring, which is unusual for me because I do like to measure. But in, for this case, I really wanted to keep it a super, super simple project. I know that people are incredibly busy this time of year and sometimes you want to get in your craft room to get away. But you just don't have necessarily a lot of time to do it. Normally I would use a ruler, but I don't see my ruler on my desk my son-in-law has been using my office which is wonderful but um, I don't see my ro the roller that I normally use so I'll use this instead it doesn't really matter I just wanted something fairly straight don't have to be perfect and I cut that scrap down the middle and I'm just lining it up on the back of the tag that I just stapled on stapled the paper on and I'll give that a moment to dry this is just a scrap piece of it's got the, oh, I thought it was a white one, but I guess not, um, piece of paper. So, and you can see I put it too close to the edge, but that's an easy fix. So I'll just smear it over and lay this one over the other. And because this one's, uh, I didn't cut it perfectly, um, I guess it could work either way. I It still covers, so I can just leave it exactly like that. I've going to cut I'm going to cut the bottom down a little bit because it doesn't need to doesn't need to go all the way to the edge if you wanted it to go to the edge you're certainly you could certainly do that. Now on these two I also put an inside piece. I put a, a an image on the inside of this one and I think I just used a scrap oops I keep doing that. Scrap on the inside of this one. Um, you know what? I have a little yellow scrap here that I think might work. My little yellow page and I like those two together so I am just going to trace and cut an inside piece now one thing I could do and I thought about doing for this but again I wanted to go really simple super simple was my goal you could turn this into a pocket quite easily if you were wanting to put something on top and I'll quickly cut this out no I know I didn't cut that perfectly but uh, let's see where is it but that's but that's okay not necessary for this and then I will match these two up and trim it down so they're the same size now I could have measured it but again quick and easy hold that in place and I'll trim Okay, and that'll be the back piece, the back covering for this. Uh, whoops, excuse me. I didn't put that back in the slot where it belongs. I apologize for that loud bang. All right, 
this goes here and I am just going to glue that down right on top of that paper. Um, I like the red line showing so I think I'll let that show. I can go down a little bit farther and have it. Yeah, you know what? That works just great. I like the fact that it's there's a couple lines here and a couple lines here. So I'll put glue on the top strap, the one that I want to be on the top. I'm right-handed so I tend to open things to the right. I was intentional about opening this to the left and you can see I forget frequently but whatever makes the most sense to you. And I guess depending on what side of the page you were going to use it on, that could also make a difference. So I'm going to put that there. And I want it to line up just about like that. And I'll push it down to let, whoops, to let it dry. Okay, then I will take, now if I were going to ink it, I would have inked the edges first, but I, you know what? I'll show you. You can still do it here. There's, I'm inking it largely because there's just a white strip that shows in there for, because it's a white backed paper. And I don't necessarily want that to show, so I'll just dull that down. And I'll ink this first simply because it truly is easier. If you're not an inky person, it's really not necessary with this kit. but I do like the finish that it gives, so I will add that. Hope everybody is well and enjoying this holiday season, whatever your, you know, your preferences are and ways to spend it and such. Some of my kids are in Idaho for Christmas, others are in Arizona, and then the one that lives in Minnesota and then the one that lives here are here with us. So it's, it's, it's kind of wonderful to be able to be together with some of them. Okay, and line that up. And I didn't line it up perfectly, but you know what? That's all right, it still works just fine. And I could come back. You can see here I didn't trim it perfectly either, so I'll just tone down that white edge. Or I could go in with my scissors, and I guess I didn't cut it perfectly or line it up perfectly when I trimmed it down. So I'll do that. Get that white edge gone. Okay, now I will put, these are uh, Thin Clear Fasteners Velcro brand. I get them at um, Walmart or Amazon. Thin Clear Fasteners General Purpose Low Profile. That's a key, they're really very, very thin. You can use a magnet if you'd prefer to use a magnet, or you don't even have to use anything at all. If you just want to fold it closed, that'll work as well. You could use a paper clip or a Tim Holtz tiny clip or something. I generally tend to put just a little bit of glue, because even though these are sticky back self-adhesive, I feel like maybe they wouldn't stick as well as they I would like them to. So I just put a little bit of glue on that, and I'm going to make sure they're lined up where I want them and I will close it in place. Okay, let me give that a moment to dry and do its thing. And now I'm going to put this back on. I'm going to do this as a two-sided one. Um, this I can just clip in my book or tuck in a side tuck or pocket or that kind of a thing. And lighten these up mostly. They don't have to be perfect either. And then press these in place. Okay, well you can see I didn't do a great job with that. Let's see if I can trim this down just a smidge. But I can also ink it, and ink hides a multitude of sins when you do things like I just did. Oh, I really messed up the bottom, didn't I? Well. Maybe I trimmed them wrong when I cut them out. But that's one of the biggest reasons I don't go edge to edge, so that it gives me a little wiggle room if I make a mistake. Now if I wanted this to, let's see, I opened it to the, to the right. If I wanted to, I could fold this back and trim it here. But I could also, like I said, just ink to get rid of that white. Ink around those edges. And there we go. 
Right, now I will trim, because it's matched up, I'll trim off the corners. I just go a little bit inside that, and that way I'm fairly guaranteed that I won't have that white bit on the back. And I'll trim off the top edge a little bit, and there we go. Oh, there's a little bit there, too. Well, heck. See what happens when I try to do too quick. Again, not a, not a problem, not a big deal. Some people wouldn't even notice it, but I prefer to trim it. All right, and then ink around all the way. Well, you don't have to, of course, but I'm going to ink around all the way. Though, you know what? You don't really need to see me do that. We'll just pretend I inked around front and back. All right, and this is ready to go. Now, I showed you on this one, I made it a little bit dimensional, and this one I did not. What I did is I just had two sets of these images, and I fussy cut one, and I did not fussy cut the other. So I will take, this is just 3M mounting foam. There's all different kinds. I think this is for windows or some such thing. There's all different kinds of mounting foam. But I will put a little bit of mounting foam on these pieces because I'm going to make this one dimensional showing you how I do it. And put a little bit of mounting foam there. Cut this. And it's just to add some extra interest and dimension to it. So I laid those down. Now these I did not ink around, simply because the birds have a, a real fine outline of white, if you can see. But you can see here they lay on top. So this is, you know, it's not super bulky, but you can maybe see there. It just gives not even an eighth of an inch, I don't think, of dimension. Or maybe it is an eighth of an inch, I don't know. But I think it's between an eighth and a sixteenth would be my guess. Though I imagine the container probably said once upon a time, but I never bothered to read it to see how thick it was. It's very thin, but enough just to give um, a little, make it pop out a little bit. So I'll peel that off, and then I'll lay these guys lined up. Now you can see when I fussy cut it, I didn't fussy cut the feet or the tail because as I was looking at the image, the feet and the tail seemed to be back a little bit. Um, if I wanted to, I could, you know, pop it out again, cut a third image and make the beak or the head or something else or the wings to stand out. But for my, my taste and my purposes, the double layer is more than sufficient. And then in the kit are included a bunch of different uh, Expressions, Yuletide, Holly and Ivy, Let It Snow, Happy Holidays, All Is Calm. So I'll just choose an image, Jingle Bell, Silent Night. Okay, these guys look like it's a silent night. And then I'll choose where I want it. Maybe do, do I want it here? Do I want it up top? I don't know that it really matters, honestly. Here I did it across the birds. Here I did it at the bottom. I think because of the color there, I might like it at the bottom. And then I'll just choose something else with the, it's the same length for the inside so that there are, there is oh, those two fit so I'll put silent night out here and again I am going to because it's a white back I'm just going to ink the edge if you are a more grungy person you could use you know the edges of your scissors and wrap this up a bit but for this one I'm going to make it easy and I'm going to try to get it mostly in the center normally I would measure it but and I want it to go underneath the birdie's feet. Let's see, I'll use my fingers. Yeah, that's close enough. All right, put that up. And on the, go on the back side and put a little bit of glue. I could put another image on there if I wanted to, or like I said, make it into a pocket. But I feel, feel like this is going to be chubby enough as it is. Okay. And then that way the white side, the back side of the quote, doesn't show. And there we go. Next, I double punched. I just used two different circle punches, some, you know, whatever those things are called at the top. Reinforcers, hole reinforcers, that's what those are called. And my personal preference for putting those on is getting it in about the center. To, I'll bring mine, I'm bringing mine down a little bit to where there's lines on my ta table so I can get it in about the center because centering things is not my greatest strength. So I got it in about the center and then I put on one. And then I generally punch a hole. 
and then I'll add the other piece to the back because I want this to be double sided. I that's just my method. I'm sure there are other ways to do it that are equally effective, but that's just kind of how I've had good luck and that way they mostly line up. All right, so there's that. And I just grabbed a little bit of kind of a yellowy, mustardy ribbon. I thought it went well with the coloring and the birds. Just a little bit of that to tie on the top. Where did I just put it? Okay, Corey. Oh, it's right here in front of me. And I'll tie this. Simply, you can sew it as well. A lot of times I'll use lace and sew it. But again, for the sake of speed and ease, I will use this and leave it like that. Now, if you like the dimension, if you like the, the finishing touch, there's a couple different products that can, you can use. You can use Seth Aptor Vintage Beeswax Embossing Powder. So you use like um, a Distress Pen, they're embossing pens and then embossing powder and then heat set it. That will give you a, a crackly fun dimension on here. And because it's got different colors in it, it makes it a little bit variegated, gives you a little bit different look. You can do that. You can also use what I use a lot, Nuvo Crystal Glaze. This happens to be clear. It's my favorite of this type of, there's other kinds. Um, gosh, I'm drawing a blank now, of course like glossy accents and others and I'm going to put it on top of my outside quote and it it takes a little bit to dry you can heat set it if you choose but if you just put it aside for an hour or so it usually dries pretty well and you can't see the word silent night now but you'll be able to once it dries and then I'm not going to do the whole bird but I am going to do the colorful top of the wings to make that stand out and that little neck piece the beak because I want the beak to stand out so I'll do that on both of them again you don't have to it, nothing I do has to be perfect or exactly lined up or very little I mean I suppose sometimes when you're putting a journal to together they everything does need to line up to to look right but for the most part these pieces not necessary at all now if I wanted the birds eyes to stand out one of the things I can use is this Nouveau Crystal Drops. This is black. It's the same company. It's Nouveau. This is just happens to be drops. And then I, um, I will do, well, I haven't used this in a while, so it may not come out great. Just a tiny little dot on top of each eye. Don't want to get too much there there we go and that just makes the eyes pop out a little bit more and that'll dry the same way the glaze will dry and there you have it a tag i hope everybody has a great holiday enjoys however they choose to celebrate and a wonderful new year i've got some fun things coming up or planned i don't know if they'll actually happen but i've got them planned and i will share that with you soon but for now thank you for joining me and I hope you're enjoying their December daily projects. Take care and happy creating.